Now, WordPress, like many other good web applications, requires a database for it to run correctly. Now, in our case, we are gonna be provisioning that database in our cluster. But before we get there, I wanna make sure that I know the environment variables or the configuration keys, if you will, that we'll use in WordPress that then we could use for our database. So to do this, I'm gonna go ahead and create a single one-off instance of the WordPress container image by provisioning a pod. So pod.yaml, we'll go ahead and do our API version. And this of course is v1. The kind is gonna be pod. The metadata is going to be name. I'll give it WordPress pod, I guess. And then the specification itself, uh, we'll go ahead and declare our containers in here. In this case, it's just gonna be one container. I'll just call it WordPress. The uh, image itself is gonna be WordPress and latest. Let's make sure we're spelling WordPress correctly. And then the ports that we need, it's really just the container, you know, port of 80. Great. So that's the default port for WordPress. Now, if I was going into production and I wanted to make sure that I'm using a specific version of WordPress, that would probably be a really good idea. And that would be going into Docker Hub and then just finding the latest version on here. You might need to verify that also with on WordPress.org or um, something like that for that specific version because you don't want that version to change all the time. You want to use a stable one. I'm using this one that changes all the time simply because we're just learning here. We're just figuring out how to get all of this working. You can adjust that later. So with this in mind, I'll go ahead and do kubectl apply dash f pod yaml. This should actually create that pod for me with that name. So given that I just named the pod, I can do kubectl and execute, and we can go into that pod with the interactive terminal dash dash bin uh, slash bash. This is mostly so I can get into the pod itself. Now my pod may or may not be ready yet, so I might have done that a little too soon, but the idea being is I want to actually start the process of creating our config map. So I'll also go ahead and do API version v1, kind being config map, and our metadata is going to be WordPress CM. And then our actual data itself is going to be what we need to find on the pod itself. Okay, so now I can actually connect to the pod as we see here on that second try. So I actually have an idea of what these things are already. In fact, I know what they are, but I wanted to show you so you can find them if you need to make changes in the future to other kinds of configuration. So first and foremost, if we look inside of the root of our container, at least the root that we are brought into, which is actually in var www html. This is very standard for WordPress instances. We see that we've got WordPress settings, but we also have WordPress config Docker and WordPress config sample. Of course, we are using a Docker container, so that's the version we want to look in. So we can do cat and actually take a look at this version. But if I scroll up a bit, what I actually see is something related to GitHub, right? So this file needs to stay in sync with this at GitHub. So I open this up, I can see the actual rough configuration for what we're looking at. It's not the same configuration, but it's close. So we've got DB name, DB user, DB password, all of that. Now you might think that these are the config map things that I wanna add in. So inside of my data, my, you know, my uh, database, name or something along those lines. You wouldn't be completely wrong except for how the actual Docker image ends up working. It's just slightly different. So if I scroll down a bit, I see that DB name is still in there, just like we saw, but I also have this get env underscore Docker definition in here, which means WordPress DB name is the actual value here. And then WordPress DB user is the next user, the actual user value. And then WordPress DB password, and so on, right? And so these values should be improved. I'm not gonna actually improve them myself, uh, but I will bring in a number of them. I'm just gonna copy and paste in here of what these values can be. So we've got all of this, and then you also might wanna have in WordPress debug, and you might want that to be true. Now, this database host, we are gonna need to change. So we'll come back to that soon, but this host value is gonna go directly to where it is hosted internally on our 
Kubernetes cluster, which is great. Okay, so with this config map, we can go ahead and apply it. So if I exit out of my running pod, I can go ahead and apply it. This should create the config map, and then it's gonna give me an error related to the pod itself, uh, or maybe the config map itself. Uh, perhaps I have some issue in here. This should actually be a quote because of how Booleans work. And there we go. Okay, so now I've got the config map. The pod did not change, of course, but I wanna actually put this value in here into the pod itself. Before I do that, I'm gonna go back into that shell. So I'll press up a few times and I'll do echo. And then I'm just gonna get one of these values here. So in this case, echo dollar sign WordPress DB name shows me nothing. This is of course by design. It doesn't actually have an environment variable. Therefore, it's not actually doing anything with it. So I'll go ahead and exit out of this and we'll try that again. This time I'm gonna go ahead and bring in the config map into my pod. And to do this, we'll do emv from, and this is gonna be our actual config map reference. And then within that config map reference, we want you to declare the name, which is gonna be my WordPress CM. Now in this case, the actual config map and the pod are in the same namespace. Now, if you're not familiar with namespaces, that's okay. But the idea being that these are in the default namespace, which of course is the one that comes with Kubernetes. It just is the default namespace is called default. Okay, so the idea being that this config map has to live right next to this pod in terms of the namespace so you can actually reference it. With this in mind, let's go ahead and apply this pod. I get this error. Of course, the pod is actually already running. So we'll do kubectl delete-f pod.yaml, and then we'll go ahead and run this again. So with con config maps and pods, you need to make sure that you do the config map before the pod, which is why I put them together and separate them like this. The config map comes first, therefore it happens first. And there we go. So I can scroll back up again. I can use the same exact pod name. And this time I can actually echo out one of these values. And now those config map values are there. So if you're a little bit more advanced, you already know that, hey, you can just switch this out to being a deployment and then use the same specification for the template in that deployment. Then you can actually adjust these values. You can even use a, you know, a hosted, a managed version of the host itself and then change these values as you see fit as well, which is totally something valid that you can do. Of course, you could also change these to being secrets or something better. I'm gonna leave them as config maps mostly for educational purposes. These values are not super secure at all. They're not secure at all. I would say they're not secure at all uh, in this case. So you would want to improve that security, but that's outside the scope of this one. This pod manifest and the config map manifest, both these things I'm actually not gonna use anymore in this way. I'll actually comment all of them out just so I don't accidentally provision it. Now I'm gonna go ahead and create a new folder called WordPress. And this is really gonna have all of my manifests in there. The first one I will bring in is the config map, but I'm gonna put it in order and I'm gonna isolate it to itself, right? So config map.yaml, we're gonna go ahead and uncomment it out now. It's the same one, but it's now isolated to itself. One of the good things about that is then I don't have to actually check it in to get if I was so inclined to stick with config maps. I don't recommend it but you totally could. This would also be true with secrets. So if you just changed it to secret kind, um, then yeah, it'd be the same idea. You don't wanna commit this. Next, the actual pod itself, we're gonna go ahead and copy that also uh, because it's almost the same as well. Inside of WordPress, we're gonna go ahead and do two, or actually I'll do it as three dash deployment diagonal. We'll see why it's three in a moment. And I'll paste all of this in. We'll uncomment it out. These dashes don't need to be there. You can leave them, it's up to you. So now, of course, we're gonna change this to being a deployment kind, which means that we need to change the API version as well to apps slash v1. Now, the general idea here is deployments gracefully update pods much better than what we just did. We had to delete the pod and then bring it back up. Deployments will do that for us. So we're gonna go ahead and start off with replicas and we're gonna leave it just as one. We're gonna scale it up and see how that ends up working out for us, but we'll leave it as one replica at this point. Um, so with the deployment itself, we then declare something called a template and we kind of tab this in. 
This template is actually the pod template. I sort of wish it was called pod template because that's basically what it is, uh, but it's just simply template. And we can actually copy all of the pod data in here. So I can come in to that template, paste in here, and then just tab it in. But the thing I don't need is API version and pod or the kind. I don't need those two things. That's all I need right there, right? And so this actually gives me the template for the pod. It's identical to what we've already seen. Now this WordPress config map is still the WordPress config map as we saw right here. So it's, it's still roughly the same sort of thing. But there are a few other attributes we need to add in here. One of them is how do we like design all of these pods together? How do we put them together? We use something called a selector for this. And so we are gonna go ahead and do match labels and we'll say app is the WordPress app, something like that. So this is going to be the selector on how we get the pods. Now to actually use that selector, we come down here into our metadata and do labels and use that exact same label. So it's simply app and WordPress app, just like that. I didn't mean to close this down. Let me bring that back up. Okay, so now this is now our deployment. There's not really any other changes I need to do. So let's go ahead and configure this stuff now. I'll exit this out and we'll do kubectl apply dash f WordPress, All right? So in my case, I actually didn't delete the pod, uh, but my WordPress uh, you know, config map didn't change at all. And then the name of the deployment, I called it pod. I should actually probably call this deployment. So let's go ahead and try that out. This time it creates a deployment. So I actually have multiple deployments in here. If I do kubectl and git deployment, I see that there's two in here. We actually want to delete one. So we'll go ahead and do kubectl delete deployment and we'll go ahead and grab that deployment name. And now we should only have just the one in there. And if I do kubectl git pods, I probably see my other pod in there. I no longer need that one either. So I can go ahead and delete that pod just like that. So the reason we show you how to delete things is also to show you and highlight deployments and what they're for. So if I delete that deployment, that pod, what the deployment will automatically do is bring another one back up, right? So these replicas here are the minimum amount of pods that have to show up for this deployment. That's what Kubernetes is gonna attempt to do. If I changed it to 10, the minimum would then be 10. Right now it's just one. So the selector itself, what we can do is we can do kubectl get pods dash L as in label. And I can actually do app equals to whatever that app is. And it can actually narrow down the pods that fall under that category. If I change that to something else, it won't find it. And so that this deployment knows, hey, this is the selector and it is identical to the template itself. Again, this could just be a pod. It, like we could also put this in a pod, the same template into a pod as well. And this will roughly speaking work together too.